Because of the way the universe is created, we each of us live in two worlds at the same time. We have to live in the outer life of our own bodies and the inner life of our own souls. Hello and welcome to Living the Inner Life. I'm your host, Chris Sheridan, and I want you to join me on a journey of discovery into our inner lives, our consciousness, our thoughts, our beliefs, our entire experience that we draw from to interpret the outside world and to respond to it. Now, it's been said that the first rule of magic is containment. Okay, and whether that's an occult magician that you don't want to share your secrets, or if it's a performing magician that you might use smoke and mirrors, and you don't want people to find out how you're doing your tricks, like what's behind the rabbit coming out of the hat. Where do you keep the doves? You want to keep that contained. That's part of the mystery. It's part of the act. You know, if you give it away, then it's not as there's no wow, there's no how, how'd they do that? Because that's part of the trick, is wondering how that was possible. What did I see happen? How could that have happened? All right? So that's easy to understand. And containment is really something that it can be very useful for us when developing our inner lives. Uh, or if we're launching a business, or we want to start out on a new project, or if we're following a dream that we once had that we've pulled out and now we're pursuing it. Okay, containment can be one of the most powerful tools that you can use, especially early on in the process. All right, so a regular container, say if it's a coffee, travel coffee mug or something, um, is a great example of containment because it keeps the coffee in, keeps it from spilling out because you don't want to do that while you're driving. And it also keeps your coffee warm, if that's what you want, if it's a thermal container. But it also keeps other things out. Okay, a fly's not going to land in it, um, dust, dirt, anything from the outside that you don't want going in your coffee uh, will be also contained. So this container is like a barrier. Inside, it wants to preserve and, yes, contain the contents. And for the outside, it prevents impurities, or anything that you don't want inside. It keeps it from coming out. A sealed container, if it's a can of tomatoes or maybe uh, canning with mason jars, you have the protection from spoilage. That's why without refrigeration, if you have a sealed container like a mason jar, you can put it in your cellar and throughout the winter, just pull a bottle out and open it up and it's still fresh as the day you packed it, okay? So you've sealed in the flavor and the food, and you've really stopped the decaying process, all right? So it can be a very preservative action that happens through containment, okay? And that's where we get the term hermetically sealed from the hermetic tradition of, um, well, I guess it was Egyptian arts going way back, but of magic. And that's how you keep your secret safe, and you keep your coffee warm, <laughs> and you keep your tomatoes from spoiling in the winter, okay? Same with the inner life. If we have something that we're working on, okay? Say if it's developing a new business idea. I could use this podcast <laughs> as an example. I didn't go out telling people what I'm going to do, okay? I'm just doing this now and putting them up, making them available if somebody wants to find them, but I've done no advertising or social media. I haven't really called and told people about it yet. I want to get it up and running. I want to actually explore this process. And it may take me several podcasts. I think this is 17 right now. It may take many more before I find my rhythm, really understand what this is all about, tweak it. I think I have the format down to about 22, 23 minutes now. I seem to be pretty consistent with that and am able to get out what I set out uh, to explore. And I'm doing these extemporaneously. Okay, I thought about it and maybe jotted some notes down earlier, but I'm not reading off any notes right now. Uh, there are no edits. This is a stream of consciousness because that's a very particular format, and that's one I wanted for this podcast, okay? But the point is, I'm not really telling anybody, even though I'm also posting it on the podcast networks so that 
maybe anybody could potentially uh, reach this podcast at this point. I'm not really advertising, okay? I want to keep it safe. I want to keep it in such a way that I can explore, okay? Because if I go off too early and say what I'm going to do, people might say, well, what, it's a, what is it about? Or how long is it going to be? Are you going to have guests? Well, why not? I like call in podcast. What are you going to do? Are you just going to talk about yourself? It can come in with all these other ideas. I want to establish it first. And then if somebody has an idea, then I can take it in. But it's coming from a place where I have already laid out a foundation, a much stronger standpoint that's not as vulnerable to outside criticism or even constructive comments. You know, those can get brought in if you're not sealed in your container, and it can really influence early on or maybe have you second guess what it is you're doing, okay, or overthink it. And you know, there's that term, too many cooks in the kitchen spoils the broth, okay? If you're developing something, certainly something that doesn't require a collaborative effort, if you're collaborating with other people, yes, you have to tell them <laughs> because that's what a collaboration is. You're going to communicate and work together as a team. But I would also keep that team contained, okay? Don't tell anybody what the team is doing until you have it figured out and you're ready to release it. So this happens with entertainment. Uh, most movie sets are closed. They don't want people just running around commenting on it. Oh, this movie looks cheesy. Maybe there's a press release that gets out that gets leaked and the special effects are cheesy. Well, the movie's not done. You're still working on it. Same in the theater. You have rehearsals. Uh, rock bands. I have a lot of experience with that. Closed rehearsals. Now, I'm going to tell everybody when the show's booked, come to the show. Come by the record, but don't come by the studio while we're recording it. Okay? It's a sacred space. This is true if it's a laboratory or a studio or a study. You want to have you know, peace and quiet to study. I know a lot of people put ambient music on if they're in the library. Maybe there are other people around, but with headphones and you have some music going on that's not too distracting. It can help make a kind of an imaginary container, a little bubble around you. So you can do your work and you can focus. It keeps you from being distracted going out or whatever it is if you're talking about what you're trying to do Maybe you're not thinking about it as much. You're actually trying to explain it, uh, and you really want it to process. And you also don't want the outside noise or static or feedback, at least at this time, coming in so you can focus. And this containment is found so many other places. It's kind of everywhere if you look. You know, it's not only a container, a jug of water or coffee that we want to keep contained until we're ready to use it. Um, you know, it's also in so many other areas of our daily lives and in manufacturing, there's the crucible that if you want to purify a metal, say like gold, uh, you want to heat it up and you put this crucible in a very tight oven or you're baking a cake in your oven at home, you want it contained. You want that heat to stay in there. You don't want it dissipating. You know, you want it to bake. Or in the case of refining gold, you want it to boil out the impurities, the dross, so you can remove that. And then what you're left with is something pure. Okay? So think about that when you're working on something. Guard who you tell, especially early on, and how much you talk about it. If you do happen to mention it to a few people. Okay? You may talk it out. You may be all talk and no action. Uh, you could overthink things. That can be really dangerous, especially at an early area. You know? So this containment is a place where you have freedom within the container. Okay? If you're in the studio or if you're practicing anything, you are able to be more free when... You're not worried about what's happening on the outside when you know you're not performing, that people aren't watching you, okay? You can 
make mistakes. You can experiment. You can fall flat on your face and pick it back up because that's how you can explore. You can find limits. You can find what doesn't work and you can find what does work. And you can do it all in this contained space that is free of outside influence and it's free of your own self-consciousness, okay? Think of a child who can run and play and sing and dance and do all these things and not worry about what they look like or what they sound like because they're kids. It'll happen soon enough that they'll be told and they'll become self-conscious and, oh, better not speak up. Oh, better not run. Well, I got to be quiet now. Can't run and play. Yeah, and that happens and we have to grow up. But hopefully it doesn't squash out too much that playfulness, that freedom of criticism, especially self-criticism, all right? And this is what I really want to get at with the inner life when it comes to containing things. Yes, ideas you want to protect. You want to protect them because maybe somebody else will steal your idea and run with it and get it to market before you do if you're talking about it too much, okay? Or if you're listening too much and you're asking for approval or seeking you know, agreeance on, on whatever it is that you're doing, okay? You may not find it. You don't want to be dependent on what somebody else feels or doesn't feel about what you're doing. Have that freedom to explore and experience and develop that which it is you want to do. Now, we also have to contain ourselves within ourselves because there are other voices in our heads. And I don't mean that in a crazy way. I mean, if you close your eyes, you can think of a teacher from third grade or a coach from high school or a boss from your first job or your ex-wife or whatever it is. You can always hear some voice of somebody saying something. And sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's not. And you can have your own voices of self-criticism, self-doubt, okay? Questioning yourself. And you don't want to do that, especially in this early stage when you're developing a new idea or you're doing something for the first time, okay? If you're going to the gym, tell no one. The people at the gym will know. And if you're, you know, telling your roommates where you're going, well, you can tell them. I can tell them when you get back, okay? But to put it out there, I'm going to do this. Start doing it. And then people ask, well, where were you? Oh, well, I was at the gym. Or, well, I was at the library. I'm taking a class. Oh, really? Okay, talk about it after you're already doing it. Okay, that'll shore things up for you. And don't second guess yourself. Find a place within yourself that's hermetically sealed, okay? Make a bubble, around what it is you're wanting to accomplish. If it's something with your diet and exercise, people will see the results and they'll ask you, what are you doing? How do you stay in shape? How do you, you know, fit in that size dress or whatever it is uh, that you have a change that's noticeable, okay, after the fact, after you've already done it. When I start telling people about this podcast, I'll probably have 20 or 30 episodes up already, okay? And that way, if new people come, then there's more of a body of work already there, and I will have hopefully found my sweet spot, and I'm rolling along putting out these podcasts in a consistent and hopefully for me, <laughs> easy to accomplish way because I like doing it and I don't want it to be too tedious for either me, the speaker, or you, the listener, because that's no fun for anyone, okay? So try to guard your thoughts, guard your feelings, guard from any voice of doubt or misgiving or any negative, because it's so easy to do. It's so easy to talk ourselves out of something, you know, especially if it's something that's maybe near and dear. It's close to the heart, okay? The heart has to be contained for safety. Now, you want to share at some point. When you're strong enough inside, then you can be vulnerable to share because you have something that's already shored up, something that's already developed, something that has 
momentum, it has some weight, and it has some meat. You know, there's some bulk to it. Okay. Then you're less likely to be discouraged by outside voices or defeated from inside voices. Okay. So how you can do this is to honor that which you want to contain. If you're refining gold, it's precious. At least it's expensive. You know, it's, it is called a precious metal, you know, and you value it and it has value. So you want to keep it contained in the crucible so you can refine it, boil it, heat it up, remove all the dross, anything that doesn't belong in there. Or if it's canned tomatoes in a mason jar, mm -hmm, you want to keep them contained. You want to keep them preserved. They're called preserves. Something that's what it is. You're preserving this. You're keeping it from contamination and spoilage. And you're keeping it fresh and ready when you're able to eat it, when you're able to take it down and open it up. Now, because you won't be contained forever, okay? This containment isn't a life sentence. You're not going to be sealed for the end of time. You know, they even have time capsules. They'll put something in a cornerstone of a building and maybe in a canister. They'll put trinkets or coins or newspaper clippings, people's names, things of the time at that time to be opened at a later date. So even a time capsule will be opened up at some point, okay? So if you're in the studio rehearsing, don't have a bunch of people there. Work on your craft, work on your play, work on your songs, work on whatever it is you're doing, okay? And then when it's time to go public, when it's time to launch the business, when it's time to have the band play out, then you tell everyone, okay? But to guard yourself from your own self-doubt, Put this container around something that's important, something you value, right? Because that's usually what we put in a container. Water, or in my case, coffee, or food. <laughs> you know, you want, it's, it's important to you. It's valuable. That's why you have a container for it. You know, if you didn't want it, you just dump it out of the container and clean it and use it for something else that has value, okay? So recognize the value in what it is you're working on, okay? Recognize why it's important not to disclose too much too soon, okay? When it's still in this fragile, uh, very amorphous state, you know, it hasn't really been solidified, hasn't really been defined, if you're still working on it, you know, it takes time. And it really gives you that focus too, okay? So, recognize the value, repeat the value. This is important to me. So you may have a time or a place where you can work on this, or even if it's five minutes, you can steal away and you have a few minutes to yourself. You can think of your business project or this idea, your invention that you want to finish up or you're working on a song. Think about it and go, yes, this is important. This is so important that I won't allow outside influences coming in. I won't talk about it too soon because then you dissipate it. There's even in some of the native cultures in the Americas, I was on Navajo land and Hopi land many years ago. And through some people I know, I was able to attend a couple events that were generally not open to outside people. And I was like, wow, this is great. You know, I want to take some pictures. And they're like, uh-uh, no, no, no. Don't take pictures. You weren't even allowed to draw what it is you were seeing. Because they felt that by copying an image of the real thing, this, this copy somehow took a piece of the real thing. And then if you take two pictures, well, now you've even pulled out some of the power, some of the energy of say if it's a corn dancer or something like that and then now you have it on a picture and now you have a drawing well that image came from that person or that figure and now you have this and that took away from the original and that's really 
an awesome way of looking at it, okay? You don't want to take away from that. Stay in it. Make it valuable, okay? Give it value. Enough value that you won't let the outside or your inside voices, any internal criticism or self-doubt, because we all have that, face it. You know, no matter what it is we do, there's always going to be a part of us that's going to say, yeah, I know, but oh, this is hard, or it's going to take so long, or I've been working on this, and I haven't seen the results I want to get just yet. Ah, what's the point? You know, a lot of us give up too soon, okay? A lot of us give up really in the last mile when we're in the home stretch. You know, there's a story of a swimmer who I guess was swimming from Catalina Island to the coast of uh, Southern California on Long Beach or Los Angeles. And it got off, she was going for a record and she was beating the record. They had all the support boats uh, following her. The rescue crews were there in case she needed anything. Uh, but the weather got bad. It started fogging in and she couldn't see the coast anymore. And because she couldn't see the coast, she couldn't see the end, the finish line, it seemed like it was forever. And they were even telling her, yelling from the boat, no, no, you're just, you know, just a few hundred yards. And I know you can't see it, but it's really there. And she gave up and was pulled out of the water just within a stone's throw of finishing. Okay. So if you get in this bubble that you create for this important thing, don't give up on it. Keep cooking it. Keep baking it. Maybe it's not done yet, you know? Maybe you do have to take it out and take a look and say, hmm, now does this fly? Does this work? Test your theory out, test your invention. Uh, maybe play a couple of the songs out. <laughs> and if they work or if they don't work, uh, or have few, just very few ears that you can trust, listen to it and take their opinions with a grain of salt. And then maybe make some alterations. But that's after you've really done this work, okay? So there is magic in containment, okay? There is power in that. You can purify things, you can bake things, you can preserve things, you can develop inventions, new songs, new ideas, and you can help create new habits of thought for yourself in your inner life if you contain them, keep them in this state of being preserved and protected from within and from without. And when you're ready, take the lid off and tell the world. And tell me about it sometime too, all right? Well, until then, we'll see you again next time here on Living the Inner Life.